Welcome to this video supporting chapter 11 of my iOS 7 development book for absolute beginners. In this video you'll take a look at the web view and web connections in iOS and you'll follow through some of the examples from the book. So let's get started. We'll create a new Xcode project. We'll make it a single view application as we've been doing all along. We'll call this web view demo. You can leave organization name and company identifier as they are. Class prefix, though, please leave empty and make sure devices is set to iPhone. Click Next and you'll be asked where you want to put it. I'm just putting it on the desktop and making sure the source control checkbox is unchecked. And then this will take us to our familiar view where we have our app delegate main storyboard and our view controller. Let's select the main storyboard. And in this case now for the main storyboard, we're going to build a web view demo. So let's take a look at the web view control. If I type web, I'm going to get the web view control and I can drag and drop it. It defaults to filling my view, as you can see. So I'll just put it in place. Can be a little bit difficult to work with, but just drag it and there we go. It's now in place and it's filling the entire view. Now, of course, if it fills the entire view like this, you can't put any Chrome on for your, um, like if you want to type in a URL or something like that. So you'll need to resize it. Sometimes it's a li little bit difficult to grab the resizing handles. Um, so that I find the best thing to do is if you just drag it so it doesn't fill the entire view, then you can grab the resizing handles and then drag it back. And I'm going to do something like this, make sure it fills the width of the screen with no margins. And I'm going to fill it all the way to the bottom also with no margins. And then leave a little bit of space at the top. So now at the top, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a button. So I'm just going to go down here and search for button. Let me resize Xcode so you can see it a little better. Oops, I added a new web view by accident. Let me just delete that. And so if I come down here and type button, I have a button here. So I'm just going to drag the button, put it up here, and I'm going to give it the name Go. And then I'm going to add a text field. I'm going to drag it over here, something like this, and make it a little wider. So it butts right up against the Go button. There we go. So now I have something I can type a URL into, hit Go, and then the web view will be populated with the contents of that URL. So in order to do this, I'm going to have to set up my outlets and my actions. So I open the Assistant. Just going to close that sidebar resize things so it's a little bit easier to read and then I'm going to start dragging so first of all I'm going to set up a property make sure I'm on view controller.h I'm going to set up a property an outlet for the text field so if I just drag and drop and say I want an outlet and I'm going to call it txt address and I'm going to create another one for the UI web view and I'm just going to call that web view okay so now I'm also want, going to want to set up an action for the Go button. So whenever the user presses the button, something's going to happen. So I'm going to drag it and I'm going to make an action. And in this case, in touch up inside on the button, I'm just going to call a function that I'll say is Go pressed. So the Go button has been pressed. And another fun little thing that we can do is on the text field itself, I can create an action, one that you probably haven't seen yet so that whenever the editing ends on the text field, so when the user usually has changed something and touches elsewhere other than the Go button, we're saying, hey, you know what, they've actually done something, they've changed something here, so maybe we can trigger an action on that. So I'll call that address changed. So we have an action there for that. So now that we have everything, um, There's just one more thing that we're going to do, and because we're using a text field on here on our view controller, we should set it to be a UI text field delegate, so we can start handling delegated stuff from the text field. Alrighty, now we should be good to go to write our actual code for the app itself, so we can close the assistant, and we can start looking at viewcontroller.m. And you know what, and the handy little thing that I like to do is have the assistant open, so I have the header file in the assistant, and I have my code in the main window so that I can inspect things like whatever I called variables and that, and it makes it a little bit easier for me to do things. Now we'd set up the text field to, we'd set up the view to be a UI text field delegate, so we have to make sure that we are doing the delegation. So I have to say txt address dot delegate. Whoops. txt address 
dot delegate equals self like so so now that it is a delegate um, I do need to be capturing some of the events on the view itself and the obvious one was the text field should return if you remember from the chapter when we were looking at text fields um, we did some delegated functions with that if you haven't looked at that yet I recommend going back and taking a look so text field should return means that when the user has pressed the return key on the keyboard we should do something so what are we going to do let's create a string that we call the address from the contents of the text field txt address dot text and then we are going to resign the first responder so that we dismiss the keyboard and we're going to call a function I'll detail that function in a moment I'm going to call that function call web and we're going to pass it the address that we just got. So we have a function called call web. It's read on the line now because I haven't built that function. Um, but we're going to call that and pass it the address that came in. So what should call web look like? Okay, so we've already said call web is going to be called call web. It's not going to return anything. And it's going to take a string that we call the address. So it's not returning anything, so I make it a void. I'm going to call it call web, and it's taking an NS string. And I'll just call that address as well. So that's what the footprint of that function should look like. So now let's see what else are we going to do in here. I forgot and the text field should return. It should just say return yes or return true. So then within call web, um, there's a few things that we need to do. And um, I recommend going through the book in detail for this. But um, there's a difference between the string containing the address and the URL. So what I have to do is I have to create, so the, the address might say http colon slash slash www.yahoo.com, but that's not a URL, that's a string containing a URL. So I need an, a URL object, which is created using nsurl, and I can initialize that using nsurl, url with string, and tell it the string. So I now have a URL object, which is good, which is a good start. So now that I have the URL object, I need to create a request using that URL object. So I would do something like an nsurl request is what's used to create that. And I'll just call that the request. And that is a new nsurl request initialized using a URL. And the URL is the one that we've just created. So I've now turned my string into a URL and I'm using that URL to generate a URL request. So now on my web view, I should say something like web view. I can load a request and I tell it what the request is. Like so. So let's see what happens when we run this. So I can now go into my text field and I can do something like http colon slash slash bit.ly slash lotl book one. I press enter. And there we go. It's, so this is an Amazon page for one of my books and it's been loaded into the web view nicely. And I could do something like lotl book two. I can hit the go button this time. And in a moment, it should load. It won't actually, because I haven't wired up the go. I haven't written the function for the go button yet. I've only done it in text field should return. So it's only working on the return key right now. If I do book three, there it goes. So this has worked nicely, and it works pretty well. But the problem is I have to type HTTP before everything. If I just said bit.ly, and say, I'll go back to, for example, LOTL book one then I'm going to have a problem. Nothing's happening. Why? Because uh, bit.ly slash LOTL book one is the address, but it's not a URL. For it to be a URL or a URI, it has to have the HTTP in front of it. So when I turned the string into a URL, it got confused and nothing actually happened. So I have to write a little bit of code 
to say, okay, if the user has only typed something like this instead of the full URL, let's prefix it with um, HTTP. So if I come back to my call web, and on here, if I now say ns string star URL string, and I'm going to say address is equal to, I'm just going to convert address to lowercase, which I can do with lowercase string like so. And now I can check if the text HTTP is present in ADDR by saying range of string and passing in HTTP colon slash slash. And if its location is not found, now I can do something interesting and I can say something like URL string equals at HTTP colon slash slash and in your URL string equals itself by appending another string which is my address. So I now have this URL string and that's if HTTP wasn't present I'm appending HTTP onto it otherwise I'm going to just set it URL string is the address and now I can go back to my NS URL and instead of URL string with address, it's URL string with this URL string that I've just created. And I should be able to run the application and not have to type HTTP in front of stuff. So let's see what happens. So now if I say bit.ly slash LOTL book one, it loads. So as a result, that's uh, one of the nice, useful little things that you got to remember when you're creating a URL uh, to load that has to be prefixed with the protocol, which in this case was HTTP. And um, so by not having HTTP in front of it, I had to write this little bit of code that appended HTTP in the front of it. So that's looking nice. Now, as you saw, I've already put a Go button on here, and I haven't coded the Go button yet because I had this uh, go pressed created for me and this address change created for me. Um, what should I do with them? Well, one of the things that I can do with them um, is, so for example, in here, I could say something like self call web. Now I'm going to get an error because call web expects a string. But instead of me reading the string in this function and passing it like I had done here, why don't I do that reading within call web? So if I just do the same for address change, and then I'm going to go back and edit the call web function. So within address change, I'm also going to say self call web. And I don't have to write the same amount of repeated code across you know, three different functions in this case. So I'm going to get rid of this out of the text field should return, and I'll put it into call web. And I'll change call web signature so it doesn't take a string anymore because it doesn't need it like so. And now change this one so that it just does self call web. So now regardless of what I do, whether it's I'm pressing the button, whether it's the address changed in the text field, or whether it's pressing the return key on the keyboard, call web gets called. And I this piece of code for pulling the address out of the text field and you know, using that to make the address, I don't need to have in three separate places. I just have it in this one place. This is a principle in programming that they call don't repeat yourself. And I can run the app and hopefully it'll work. So I can now do HTTP colon slash slash bit dot Lee slash LOTL book two. I can press the go button and the browser will do its thing. And there we go. So that's an example of creating a very simple browser application using the web view and using a text field and understanding how to use URLs. And the next video in part two, we'll see how to create an actual app that is internet connected rather than using the browser.